Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're gonna to be showing you how for $300 you can build a gaming PC. This is kind of the future of the pre-built upgrade market that may be coming very soon once things start to settle down. Before we talk about this PC, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Antec and their DF600 Flux case. The DF600 is part of the Flux lineup, focused on delivering great airflow while not breaking the bank. We absolutely love the DF600 because of its five pre-installed fans, three of which are addressable RGB, and its awesome temper glass side panel, along with having some overall great build quality. We experienced awesome temperature results in the DF600 and highly suggest it for your next high-end gaming PC, along with all the other cases in the Flux lineup. So if you're interested in the DF600, please check the link in the description down below to learn more. And special thanks again to Antec for sponsoring today's video. So we picked this PC up on eBay. This is the Lenovo Mid Tower that comes with a 6th gen i5. And you can get these for around $160 to $200. They are kind of hit or miss and they come in multiple forms factors we recommend going for one of the mid towers because the only other form factor that I've seen is like a mini tower which you cannot upgrade at all. Just like our very recent video where we upgraded Dell Octiplex we're gonna be showing you how to do this step by step by upgrading it with another 1050 Ti and a SSD making this a really awesome value if you can manage to get your hands on it. So how we not waste any more time open this thing up and get to upgrade. All right so to get this thing open very similar to a standard computer you have two thumb screws I'll go ahead and get those off. Now, this specific one that we bought came with eight gigs of what I believe to be DDR4 because six gen, it, oh my God, oh that was dusty. Uh, six gen is very weird. Six gen uh, typically can take DDR3 or DDR4. So let's go ahead and pop these sticks out and uh, just see what we have in, oh my God. See what type of RAM we have in here. This is definitely going to need a dusting. I was actually just thinking about buying an air compressor the other day from Walmart for these. I think and I was is. like, no, we don't need them. So yes, it looks like we have four gig sticks and it is 2133. So yeah, this is DDR4. So that's pretty awesome. It comes with dual channel DDR4, eight gigs. We don't even need to upgrade this. It's pretty much ready to go. Um, we do have a 500 gig hard drive that already has Windows installed on it, but we're going to be installing Windows in this 240 gig SSD. Um, we will be reapplying thermal paste because the stuff that is under this, I guarantee you is disgusting. So we're gonna put some new Arctic thermal paste on there, try to get the best bang for buck and then adding a 1050 Ti. So. Um, let's do some cleaning real quick, I think, and uh, go from there. Dust it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and it's time to reapply some thermal paste, because you know what? This is a little bit newer than some of the Optiplexes, but the thermal paste is probably not Toasty Pro standard. Now, of course, this isn't something you have to do. The system will very likely be perfectly fine without the reapplication, but this is just something that once again, like Matt said, we gotta get up to our standard, throw on some Arctic thermal paste to make sure oh we get the best goodness. performance. Yeah, That's look bad. at the, uh, it's just so dry. It's just not good. So we're gonna use our alcohol swabs once again. It's just crazy how these pre-builds have much better coolers than the ones that they include with the like i5s and i7s and i3s. Way better. So does this have an extra SATA port or SATA cable ready to go? Not an extra SATA cable, but I, I thought ahead and uh, I got one, you know? So you yeah, you would actually have to buy a separate SATA cable unless you unplug the DVD drive. Um, you will need an extra one. Now, we found that the best way to mount these um, because there's not really a, a great way to do it from what we could tell is basically to go upside down like this um, and then use this hole right here. And I know it's only one hole, add some adhesive onto the other side um, to keep it from moving around and it'll be fine. But you're gonna use this SATA power connector right here to plug it in and then you're going to run your SATA data cable, which we'll do in just a second. Look at that, installed, easy peasy, little sticky there, plug in the SATA power cable right in this slot. Might need to, can. might need to do a little snipping of this zippity doo dah day tie that it came with. Bend that over. We just need a little bit of extra slack. Just, just a little bit. Oh uh, yeah. All right, and now we're going to want to swap our hard drive SATA, which is uh, SATA one. We're gonna swap that and put that onto the SSD so that it automatically will boot to that one every time. Just like so, boom. And then we're going to plug in our new SATA, which is right over here to SATA three, and that's what'll run 
our hard drive. Okay, um, now before we install the graphics card, for some reason these do come with a parallel port um, installed, but it's very easy to move. You're just gonna take off the PCI bracket and then we're going to put it, we're gonna move it all the way down to the bottom. Really, we don't even need it, but hey, maybe there's someone out there using like a very, very old printer or something. Cause it might. Huh. All right, it's Daddy Matt's turn. Woo! Now, yes, we'll put the RAM back in. Of course, if you bought this as is, you probably didn't need to take it out in the first place, but you know how this works. Slot it in, make sure the holes line up. Yes, there we go. Two thumb trick always works. That's good. Now it's my turn to do the graphics card. So here we have right here is the uh, Gigabyte 1050 Ti. Now these actually should come with low profile adapters, but we don't need them. So because it's a full size one, but we bought a bunch of these for our website, pcbros.tech, which we'll talk about later at the end of this video. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this thing in here. It is currently using low profile bracket. Is That's the other convenient. one in here? Yeah. Ah, yes it is. So <laughs> hey, I gotta do it the other way around, but guess what? You won't have to do this, so. Don't you wish we used the MSI one in this one that came yeah, with the full you know profile? What? I don't wanna hear it. Oh, don't show the mess. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're installing the We're full. installing the thing that should already be installed for you, so don't worry about this. This is just extra behind the scenes content. Look at that. Finger tight, that's Matt's motto. Okay, can Matt remember which way these went on? I think it was oh, yeah. Big Boy. Oh yeah, it, it kind of makes sense if you look mm -hmm. at it. All right guys, GPU is now ready like it should have been. So what we're gonna be doing is making sure when Jackson took out the serial port, he kind of did the step for me, but I'm gonna do it again. So he put this back right here. It's kind of latches on, at least it should latch on. Use a screw. Oh, use a screw. This one's gotcha. advanced. This is advanced. So unscrew that screw, pull this back. We're gonna use the topmost slot right here. This cable that runs across is like really awkward. Um, we're probably gonna need to unpin this right here for a second. So this right here is kind of like pinned down. So we're gonna make sure we get underneath this card. This is a very special advanced maneuver. And then we're gonna go ahead and line this up like so. Make sure that you're not Make sure that you actually take out. I, I the was other. like, he has a plan. I don't have a plan. He has a plan. He has to. They just slide out, or they break off. They break off. Oh, but like my. really break off. Like you gotta break it. I feel like I'm gonna cut my finger. <laughs> <laughs> we have first aid kits. All right, here we go. Break this one off. Maybe yours won't come like this. I don't know. After you break it off, let's go ahead and try this one more time. Now we can actually line these up. This two-slot card can actually line up in the two slots and then look at this what it's lined up this is the most important part guys you ready here we go click uh, it sounded really bad actually yeah but, it sounded a little painful but uh here we go now this will hold down these screws and then you take this little guy right here this little power supply screw that we like to call um, and we go back here and we screw this in and then after that what do we get to do gamers then we get to play some video games because well, that's what you're here for, right? To see how this thing performs in games because we clickbaited you with a thumbnail showing that this thing plays really well at games. And I hope it does. I do feel like it will, but we're about to find out. I'm gonna go and clip that back because, well, why not? Let's game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this $300 easy to build gaming PC all put together, let's talk about some benchmarks real quick. Now we decided to run these same benchmarks that we did on our $250 gaming PC, which if you haven't seen that video, hit the eye in the top right corner to check that out, just to show you how much more performance you will get for going for something like the i5-6500 as opposed to the i5-2400. And first up in a game like Valorant, we got some really awesome results. On high settings 1080p, we got over 140 FPS most of the time, which is to be expected in a game like Valorant. It is super easy to run and it runs on pretty much anything. Any APU will run it at over 60 FPS, but it is still a game that people like to play on PC. And if you're looking to get a computer for games like Valorant or CSGO, this PC would have no problems running it at over 60 FPS, sometimes into the hundreds if you're playing at 1080p medium high settings. The same goes for games like Fortnite, which with the $250 PC, we normally got around 90-ish FPS on pro settings, which is epic view distance and everything else on low. But in this PC on Fortnite pro settings, we got 150 FPS most of the time, sometimes even higher than that. The improvements from the 2400 to 6500 definitely gives you a lot more performance, sometimes 40 to 50 FPS, which for somebody wanting to play entry-level high refresh rate in a game like Fortnite, I think for $300, you definitely can do that 
that with this PC, and that, that would translate over really well to other esports titles like Rocket League, and as we saw at the beginning of the benchmark, Valorant, Rainbow Six Siege, all those games would run really well at 1080p high settings at probably over 100 FPS a majority of the time. For a $300 PC, that is very impressive. Now for the game that did not run very well on our $250 PC, Call of Duty Cold War, and well, it did run, not great, but it did run a lot better than the $250 PC, which we consider to be unplayable because of all the stutters. On 1080p with a 90% resolution scale, which again does look a little bit blurry, you do get an average of over 60 FPS, which is all you can ask for for a PC for $300 playing a latest AAA title game like Call of Duty Cold War. In some maps, you might experience lower frame rates, just keep that in mind. We are playing the Nuketown map, so if you do play other modes or try to play games like Warzone, you're probably going to have some dips below 60 FPS, which could make the game unplayable, so do keep that in mind, but I would say this is definitely playable. The stutters are gone compared to the 2400, so it's in a lot smoother experience, and the FPS is a bit higher, giving you more frame rate to work with, and I would highly suggest enabling VSync on this PC to try to lock it at 60 to maybe avoid those issues in the future. So overall, for $300, I think this is a very worthy upgrade over the Dell Optiplex we did before. Again, at the beginning of this video, we did mention that it is kind of hard to find these PCs. They do come in and out of stock on eBay, but if you can get it at a good price point, around $140 to like $160, and then slap in something like a 1050 Ti, or even better, a 1650 when stock does get better, you have yourself a really, really awesome gaming PC for $300 that can pretty much play any esports title you want and stretch into some AAA titles on lower settings and actually get a playable experience. So overall, I'm very happy with this PC build for the money. How about we going to bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, so a lot of you are probably wondering how much of an upgrade is this over the Dell Optiplexes for $50 to $100 more? Well, we can say one thing, you're getting USB 3 on the 6th gen i5 builds. You're also getting a decent amount more CPU power. It's actually pretty surprising seeing the games like Call of Duty, Fortnite, and Valorant uh, play at about, I would say, 30 to 60 more FPS on average just because of that CPU upgrade. Call of Duty Cold War was still kind of difficult. Most of these modern games coming out really want more than just four cores. So the 6500 does struggle in that situation, but it does still get 60 FPS on basically 90% uh, resolution scale 1080p low settings. So it is playable. It's a lot smoother than the other Optiplex where we had a lot of stutters and what made for almost an unplayable experience. But I'm actually really happy with these Lenovo PCs. Very happy I found this deal on them. They might be a little bit harder to find than normal Optiplexes, but if you do find them locally or on eBay, let's say, it, they are definitely a really good deal and you should not hesitate to pick them up. Now, of course, if you don't want to build this specific PC yourself, PCBros.Tech, where we do sell gaming PCs that are pre-built, ready to go, check that site out to see if you can pick up anything like this in stock. So overall, guys, very happy with this build for the money. If you're interested in picking up this PC in particular, links in the description down below. They are affiliate links and they do help us out. And hopefully our guide helps you along the way to put this together yourself. So if you haven't already, don't forget to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Adios, amigos. Oh, so now we're going Spanish on it. Move that motor.